Many of you are likely familiar with the term home lab and what it means, but there's actually no real official definition per se of what a home lab should be or shouldn't be. Um, but in this video, I wanna kinda of talk about the topic of home labs and what it means personally to me. The fact that there's no official definition for a home lab is actually not necessarily a bad thing because that allows you to define what your home lab is or isn't. Um, but for me personally, uh, I have my own thoughts about what a home lab uh, definition would consist of. Um, and since there's no official definition, this is my, my opinions, uh, and you may have different opinions, of course. Um, but one of the biggest points for me is if you have some, it has to be something you own and it's located at your house. Because um, otherwise it's someone else's computer or someone else's home. It still can be a home lab, it's not your personal home lab. So if you just have several devices in your network, such as a computer, a laptop, your phone, some media streaming devices, and you're primarily using the internet, and you don't really have a dedicated device or environment where you can kind of tinker and play around with or host any services or, or anything like that, or anything centralized in your, in your home network, I would consider that to just be more of a standard home network than actually a, uh, a home lab. So. A home lab could be very simple. It could actually be something as, as simple as this, or this, or this, or that, or that, or something like this. Um, if you go to Reddit, to their home lab subreddit, uh, you will see lots of examples of home labs, and some are like really small and simple, like little mini labs, and some are full-blown like data centers, uh, a lot more stuff than what I have here. Um, so there's, there's everything in between. Um, from, from the very small scale to the very large scale. Um, it just depends what uh, you wanna do as your hobby or where you're gonna spend your money and time. <laughs> um, and everybody has different um, needs and perspectives. And, and really, I slowly grow my network based on what I need as a, over time. I don't just um, put stuff in my network in general unless I have a need for it. So that helps me to keep it kind of more, a little more under control. <laughs> and um, it helps me to kind of slowly grow it naturally over time. Cause this has been like a five year evolution. A home lab is a nice fun area where you can actually just tinker around, play with stuff. So what about the cloud? How does that fit into home labs? Cause I know some people, if they build um, their own services and stuff in their cloud that they're paying for, um, they consider that as a home lab environment. And for me, I, I think it's great to use cloud services for various purposes as part of your, an extension of your home lab. But for me personally, I don't necessarily consider that home lab because it's really someone else's computer. I would consider it more of like a personal cloud you know, that you're paying for. I know sometimes people will say um, the home lab, having run in a home lab is like Nextcloud or, or some kind of cloud type service at your house is that's your own personal cloud. But I don't really like to call it a cloud, personal cloud for a home because <laughs> Um, it's my computers, it's not in the cloud, it's actually my, my own computers that I own, so, you know, and software and stuff that I run on them. For the purposes of a home lab, from, from my, in my opinion, um, I, I wouldn't necessarily consider cloud um, services as, as a home lab necessarily. I know it's a play, it could be a playground, that's probably controversial, but as it could be a, definitely a very beneficial playground to learn how to use the cloud technologies and to maybe host some various services, sometimes it's nice to host things outside of your network, like VPNs and stuff like that, so you can actually have a secure connection into your network without actually exposing your, you know, your IP address and that kind of thing, right? Um, so I definitely think there are purposes and uses for it, for it, but I would be more likely to consider that an extension of a home lab versus this is my home lab. I hope you like this video to kind of show you a little bit of like kind of examples like what a home lab uh, what could be. Um, this is a real quick overview of it. Uh, there's a lot more that could be said and you know, should be said at some point. Uh, but I'm keeping these videos short and simple um, for now to get started, to have some video content. Uh, my main focus is my websites, uh, written guides and stuff, because I, I, I personally prefer written guides for a lot of things, but uh, I think video has its place. Um, some people like to learn through videos, um, but I, like, I really like to use videos as like a show and tell. Um, maybe walk you through a few things at some point in the future when I get a little more time. I only have so much time, so I'm trying to dedicate most of my time to my websites and a little bit of time to do some videos for you guys so you can actually see some, some things a little more hands-on instead of just like some pictures and you know, words and verbal descriptions. So I'm hoping you find these videos uh, interesting and I'll keep trying to make these videos nice, short, and simple where I don't have to do a lot of editing. 
um, and time spent on it uh, because yeah, I want to be able to do both both things. So, um, so let me know if, uh, if you like this and you want to see more things like this. Um, until next time, thanks.